The following program is presented by Pro Sound and Video. On today's episode of Broward Teen News, we're here at the home of the lightning to find stories in our community. Stay tuned to learn about how a local shop keeps a spiritual connection between its customers. Hear the heartwarming story of this book swap. Kimberly covers a family walk event. And much, much more. Hello and welcome to Broward Teen News, Cyberspace High School Edition. I'm Alex Land. And I'm Nicole Borman, and we're here to tell you a variety of stories from our South Florida community. Like our first one, which focuses on a quaint crystal shop in Pembroke Pines. But it's not just the crystals that are special. It's the crystal clear connection between everyone who enters its doors. Within a quaint plaza lies a shop. Known mostly for its charm and galore of gems, herbs, and more. We also have like a variety of things of like events, candles, tarot, um, we also have like a lot of crystals. But when you take a closer look, the people What's this? are the hidden gems. I like to think of Cunabis as like a safe space for anyone um, and it's more than just like a, a retail store or a metaphysical shop for me and for all of us who work here. It's we come here because we enjoy like having these day-to-day -day conversations with people. We enjoy like, you know, kind of being there for people. Yeah, like, oh, okay. <laughs> you could say that adversity here builds people up more than it brings them down. I went through a period where I was in a really bad abusive relationship and that's where I kind of took that step for myself to try to better myself even more and that's where I kind of started seeking that that um, whole spirituality and like just becoming whole and um, finding the power within. And that power has been crystallized by the people behind it all. It's really nice to be able to kind of share those experiences with so many people on a daily basis. Like it's kind of, you can help so many different people in so many different ways that you probably didn't, I didn't even know were possible before I started working here. But Employees usually wish their customers a nice day. But Cunabis employees but wish like that, that their customers Wait. would stay. Yeah, like that. <laughs> <laughs> Alessia Levian, so nice. CB TV. I know we've only known each other for about a month, but you bring a joy to me that others just can't match. So, I guess what I'm here to ask is. Will you be my valentine? Ew. While his intentions were pure, and his confession was brief, young Niall found himself facing the five stages of grief. You're kidding, right? Cried poor Niall, as he was forced to face stage one, denial. Soon Niall, heart heavy like an anchor, used violence to satisfy stage two, anger. I did nothing wrong. Anyone will get rejected. Stage three, bargaining, is what Niall just attempted. No amount of emotional suppression could prevent Niall from stage four, depression. While the outcome wasn't his preference, young Niall has come to terms with stage five, acceptance. And for those of you interested, I am free February 14th. Alex, have you ever ridden a train? I can't say that I have, but I've always wondered how they work. That's honestly a really interesting topic. Here's Tyler to put us on the right track. The modern transportation industry remains dominated by our four-wheeled friend, the car. At Dania Beach Station, that's not the case. Here, the mighty locomotive goes the extra mile to take people where they need to be. But how exactly do trains function? If you were to ask an average passenger, I don't know much about trains. I know they get you to point A to point B. Um, I know that it takes you where you want to go. Um, it's fast. Very few would have an answer. To find out, we have to track down the foundations of locomotive technology. Most trains you'll see are powered by diesel. Diesel enters the engines and produces compressed air when burnt. This air pushes the pistons in the engines, which produce electricity, and thus power the wheels. As the engine chugs along, something needs to put the motion in locomotion. 
that's where the wheels roll in. Unlike these tires, train wheels are cone in shape. This allows them to be directed to the center of the tracks and tilt whenever the train needs to make a turn. Under the wheels lies the rails, which many people know guide the train around. But what most don't know is why rocks populate the tracks. Gravel can be found on the rails for multiple reasons. They distribute heat, keep the rails steady, keep plants from growing, and drain rainwater. Those rocks are the final touch that make a functioning train system. Trains are wonderful modes of transportation, but not looking at the science behind it would be undermining what makes the wheels really turn. Now if you'll excuse me, I've got a technological marvel to catch. Tyler Buxtell, CB TV. In the 1940s, a radio broadcast detailing the invasion and destruction of New Jersey caused a nationwide panic as police stations were flooded with anxious callers asking questions about the event and wondering, could this be the end of humanity? But what listeners overlooked about the broadcast was its brief reminder during the program's intermission that this was simply a retelling of Orson Welles' novel, War of the Worlds. This was the first piece of media that would fall into a genre known as analog horror. This genre focuses on telling a story through the means of old communications technology and is often, if not always, in the second person perspective. With its retro style, media that falls into this genre often follows a theme of otherworldliness, with stories of supernatural creatures taking a hold of society and using humanity's main sources of communication against us. The genre has garnered much popularity on the internet, with YouTube channels such as Local 58, Gemini Home Entertainment, or the Mandela Catalog conveying their narratives in their own style whether it's through fictional news broadcasts or commercials. But there's one thing they all have in common, and that is their eerily cryptic and disturbing visuals, which has influenced the creation of communities on the internet dedicated to decoding and solving the secrets within these videos. So why is this genre gaining so much attention? Well, maybe it's because of how immersive it is, with viewers being able to experience the story as main character rather than a spectator. Or maybe it's how interactive it can be, with channels such as Local 58 encouraging viewers to visit websites, call phone numbers, or even look at source code. And while some of these stories may never get their tight-knit endings, one thing is for certain. This genre of horror is here to stay. I'm Samantha Perez, CB TV. Here in South Florida, there's a huge melting pot of traditions, ethnicities, and cultures. However, the equal news coverage for individuals has always been an injustice throughout the years. Michael covered an event that covered this issue. The trench coats that they had to wear, but they continued to walk. Dozens of Florida citizens have gathered before Lauder Hill City Hall in protest. That we could stand together and raise an awareness and raise our voice collectively in protest of what is nothing short of an injustice. We're saying that we want all people to be recognized as a missing person. People of color make up only 13% of the population, yet make up 35% of all missing person reports. Unfortunately, a lot of the time, missing people of color are just labeled as runaways, which means they don't get an Amber Alert, they don't get a lot of media attention, and they definitely don't get as much law enforcement engagement as they should. People think equity and equality is the same thing, and it's not. And so there are so many times where white women get so much media attention, response, and a call to action when they are missing. And black, brown, and indigenous people, humans, we don't, they don't get that same respect. Which is why everyone here at the Sound the Alarm event in Broward County are ready to make their call to action. We're sounding the alarm. We're sounding the alarm for change. We're doing the building of, uh, of change. We are the, the change makers right now. And so I'm very grateful even for like every entity of what this event was about. Giving a platform not only to survivors, but to anyone affected by this crime is what Jamaro Johnson hoped to do while organizing the event. The purpose and the goal is to provoke conversation and raise awareness about the lack of media attention, respect, response, and call to action that black, brown, and indigenous humans get when they go missing. Events like this make a difference because it brings awareness. And a lot of times that is the most difficult thing is bringing awareness to very important topics that make that safety net for all of our children as we look at our communities going forward. We know how to solve the issue, we just need our voices to be heard. 
She, along with all the speakers, hope to spread awareness and help those struggling with these issues. Until we really address what people call modern day slavery, like why, why did these people not matter based on their race? It's just so many things that intertwines with trafficking that we are change makers, but we're gonna have to go and get the policies to, and, and put it on paper to support our movements and what we're really doing. Michael Orlando. Not just interconnected, but exactly the same crisis. CBTV. Hey, I'm Alex, and I love two things in this world. Movies, and these spot the difference activities that you'd find on the kids' menu. So when I found out I could combine the two of them, I simply couldn't get enough of it. Continuity is the term used during editing that involves combining related shots or components of related shots to convey a sense of consistent story in both time and physical space. If that sounds like a complicated string of words combined to describe something very simple, you're probably right. And I thought the exact same thing while writing this script, so I think it's best if I show you. That's continuity. This cup has continuity. It's in the same spot that it was in the last shot. It's that simple, yet somehow not Really. Continuity errors usually aren't intentional. Productions have a lot of moving parts, large crews, and can take up to several days filming just one scene, which leaves a lot of room for error. Though that's not to say that all continuity errors are super obvious. Sometimes they're pretty hard to find. There's actually one in this shot that I'll give you a bit of time to find. That's right, my laptop's gone. Now that we're all on the same page about continuity, I think it should come clean. Now, I really hope this doesn't change your perception of me, the award-winning filmmaker that I am, but I've had continuity errors throughout this video, but they've been purposeful, like I meant to do it. But I've had videos in the past with accidental ones. In episode 429, we were doing the egg drop, Nick had dropped his first, but I really wanted to open mine first, and I was in the heat of the moment, and then the Orbeez went everywhere, and I couldn't clean it up, so I just left in the final edit. <laughs> I really hope you can forgive me. Now I admit, that's a bit extreme, but some people are ruthless. There is a Starbucks cup on screen for like four seconds in Game of Thrones, that it manages to be one of the only reasons why people still talk about the show three years later. There are plenty of movies and shows with continuity errors, but you just don't notice them because you're distracted by the story. In this case, there was no story to be distracted by. So, I guess it's okay to keep mistakes in the video as long as it's good. I'm Alex Land, CB TV. Community service can be done in thousands of different ways. Here's a story of an individual who uses just a wagon to brighten up the days of others. If, on your daily walks through your local neighborhood, you spot a little red wagon filled to the brim with adventures. Four, four thousand dollars worth of books. Ooh, wow. Yeah. Stop where you are, pick up a book, and share a laugh with Justin Rudd. Awesome. <laughs> I didn't know you did. Because you just found a neighborhood classic. I love this place. So I put the wagon on my front lawn with some books in it and people bring books, people take books and it is a resource for people to get free books. Yes, it's here every day. This red radio flyer wagon is a real page turner in many people's lives. I come back to this library frequently because I've been doing a lot of reading, especially during the pandemic. So I read, you know, a few books a week. It just makes me happy that the books aren't being wasted. People bring books all the time. Mm -hmm. Always new books here. It may come as a surprise to you that the most powerful stories come not from these pages, but from the wagon's namesake. Riley was my first or second English bulldog, and when Riley was older, his legs didn't work so well, so I uh, got this wagon so that I could put him in the wagon and I could walk to the nearby business district and have coffee or have lunch and take Riley along with me. You know, when Riley's Red Wagon Book Swap was created, um, it, it, you know, I, I, I wish that my dogs could always be with me forever, but it's just a, a, a fact that uh, animals and people uh, were only put on earth for a, a shorter amount of time. 
and when Riley passed away, uh, I wanted to carry on uh, the memory or the legacy. And I, in honor of him, it's called Riley's Red Wagon Book Swap. And I believe that second chances are a, a great thing in this life, um, new opportunities, and I like to take advantage of those. And despite um, my dog's uh, passing, um, the wagon is here and the wagon is what's going to live on and on. His best friend, Riley, is the inspiration behind the station. You can carry on their legacy. Something good can come out of it. And we've made the best of those situations and created the Red Wagon Book Swap. For Justin, it only took a small red wagon to turn his loss into a benefit for everyone. There's a silver lining to the sadness that you have from losing a pet. But if you can honor them and know that you're nurturing people, then you're being nurtured by the love that you had for that pet. That's the way I see it anyway. Whether it's a paw print on his driveway or a paw print on his heart, their story is set in stone. And that's a love you can't find on the page. It, it still hurts when you think about uh, your animal passing, but knowing that um, you're doing something good or something good has come because of that. Kimberly um, Blum. That just makes my heart, my heart sing. CB TV. Here on Broward Teen News, we have the opportunity to collaborate with other schools from South Florida. Here is the STN third place feature story from Seminole Ridge High School. Lined up and down Pine Avenue, vendors getting back into the normal routines of serving the community after the pandemic hit their businesses hard in 2020. They told us to shut down because there's COVID spreading. After that, we just kind of stayed home for like months and like there was nothing, no business, no anything. For one vendor, On Point Jerk Chicken, their upcoming business was faced with ongoing obstacles like a five month delay on the order of their truck and no customers to serve. I didn't know what to do because all the nightclubs, everything that we were planning on being around was shut down for over a year and a half. In the past, hesitations to become a vendor were not uncommon because of the limitations in place for these types of businesses. I think that the barriers to entry for food trucks were very difficult. You had to navigate a lot of chapters pre-COVID. However, a recent bill introduced by Long Beach Senator Lana Gonzalez now supports street vendors and eases restrictions on them, bringing light to unideal circumstances and hope to those who wish to become a, a vendor. It's a good thing because a lot of food vendors, they don't have rights to do much because like the community is pretty strict on them. Nothing about COVID really was a good thing, but there are some positives that are coming out of it that are allowing for people to like kind of lift themselves out of their socioeconomic status. Can I have the potato salad, please? Sounds good. Thank you. Despite all of the challenges they faced during the pandemic, vendors across the city of Long Beach, like On Point Jerk Chicken, are still finding the silver lining in a difficult situation. For WSRH Extra, I'm Madison Newman. Hey, hey. Today at Seminole Ridge High School, Florida JROTC programs are going head-to-head -head in a battle for the best battalion. These schools have been putting in the work, and today, they'll be recognized for it. At the end of this competition, you know, they're going to be awarded with, like, trophies and medals and stuff like that. So their hard work is, you know, it paid off once they get these recognitions. One of those being awarded is Battalion Commander Tanner Basso. Tanner is working hard alongside his team to make a difference in the program. I dedicate a lot of time. I mean, I'm here on Saturdays so for some competitions. I'm part of a bunch of teams that we do, such as the Raiders team, drill team, saber team, color guard team. And um, every day I have JRTC for an hour every fifth period. And every, that entire hour I'm working, making sure stuff gets done for our program. And the secret behind Tanner's hard work is a love for what he does. Like JRTC, it feels like I've been doing it for so long and like I'm so into it. It just seems like it's so me and the people I've met here, all my friends really are mostly in JRTC. It's like my life. Tanner's accomplishments do not go unrecognized and his parents are supporting him every step of the way. 
he is immensely dedicated. He is, um, this is all he loves. This is, he, he loves doing other things and other sports and being part of other groups, um, but this is number one. I couldn't be prouder um, as a mother to see him excel and be everything he could be in JRTC and be dedicated to become the battalion commander and make it happen, um, it's every mother's dream. While many in the JRTC program here at the Ridge are hardworking and dedicated, Tanner Basso takes his love and compassion for the program to a whole new level. For WSRH Extra, I'm Blake Waterman. Monday to Friday, obviously I have my full-time job. I'm an accountant. And then in the evenings, I basically go back to Costa Long Beach, try to finish my master's degree in finance. And then Saturday and Sunday, I'm here at the restaurant, right? Uh, I moved from Colombia, to be honest, because of the, all the pandemic stuff, like the work in my house, like for my mom and step, that was, was not the best situation. So I take care of the entire house, also my sister and everything. Well, I, I pay my university, I pay the rent in my house, but I also have my economical responsibilities over here. It was a high risk being here during COVID because you have contact with people, right? And they had to do what they had to do to get by as everybody else did, right? I did get into debt for, you know, just trying to stay, you know, having the doors open. But, you know, I'm hopeful that things will turn around and I'll get out of that hole. Yeah, because if I if I have the business okay, the customers that come here is going to be happy with that. They're going to help me with the tips with that. And that, that's the way that I can like, make an extra to send to my, to my country, to my family. Uh, Alex, what are, what are you doing? I don't know. I've been in the metaverse for so long. I can't tell what's real and and what's fake. Here's Alex to tell us about this scary phenomenon. Today, it's honestly a challenge not to connect with people. No matter where you are, apps like Instagram, WhatsApp, and Facebook have made it easy to bring together friends and family. CEO Mark Zuckerberg has always wanted to connect people, which is why Facebook has changed their name to Meta, which is short for the Metaverse. Metaverse is much broader than just virtual meetings and, and you know, just chat rooms. It's uh, sort of the idea that the entire life that we live right now could be exercised in a digital space. Businesses, a lot of people are seeing the advantages of having VR. So for things like virtual meetings, it can add a little bit more of a friendly nature to it. Would I want to be part of the Metaverse? Absolutely not. The amount of data that could be collected from entire body tracking, eye movements, what you look at, that is just something I, I'm not too comfortable with. I think that's a bit of an invasion of privacy. And it hasn't just been privacy that's been a concern for people. The problem that I see with Metaverse or any real social media is the fact that, you know, there, there's filters on everything. And I think that we'll find ways to filter ourselves in a virtual world. When you start to change the DNA of your personality because you now have the technology to do that, I think it's going to lead to disingenuous relationships. But we don't know where it's going to go because it hasn't happened yet. So I mean, you create a new universe because that's kind of what's happening, then you're also creating a new morality. Even if the metaverse isn't real, meta won't stop until their fantasy becomes your reality. I'm Alex Zuka, CB TV. There's a wide variety of charity organizations that work for thousands of worthy causes. Here's an event that Kim covered during an STN practice that definitely takes a big step into making a difference. <laughs> Taking a walk around Markham Park, you wouldn't expect your steps to gather this kind of crowd. And as you prepare to go off to the races, you'll notice dogs, vans, and people of all ages walking alongside you. Uh, the, I did walk today. I walked with my three girls, my husband. It felt great to get out. It was early. It was nice weather. And 
Um, it was fun, it was a little hard, but it was still fun. Even though many would lament the idea of waking up early on a Saturday morning just to jog, these people are glad to be able to cherish the moments with their family. That's why today's event is all to be cheered and clapped for. Here, you can find most everyone running together and hugging their loved ones. It's sad to say that tomorrow, that simple privilege may not be guaranteed. Even now, they're lucky that someone made a wish. When he was two, he was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia. Then we were in the hospital for six months. He got four rounds of chemo. He lost all his hair, his eyelashes, his eyebrows. For a second there, we didn't think he was going to make it, but he pulled through and now he's a striving little boy. It was a hard journey, but it was a journey that we had to go through, unfortunately, and it made him who he is today. I don't know these people. I don't know the other kids, but I can relate in the sense that I know what it's like to be a parent of a sick kid. And then again, if I ever have to be in a situation, I can remember there's stuff like this that reminds me I'm not alone. She was really, really sad. She was feeling like she was the only kid in the world who ever got sick, and the doctors came in and realized she was kind of sad. One day, she started thinking about a little bit more than just being sick. With wheels coated in gold, the walkers and volunteers are all looking towards tomorrow. And even if the chances of it arriving aren't promised, we can be glad that the wish was made. Reporting for Student Television Network, Kimberly Blunt. What's up, Cypress Bet? I'm Morgan Haggett. And did you know that Kim Kardashian is suing Kanye West over defamation? No? Well, that's because it didn't happen. Today, I'm going to be going around asking students whether or not they know fake news. So what was your guys' reaction when you found out that the queen died from COVID this morning? When she died from COVID? I did not see that. When she died from COVID? I knew that was going to happen to why are we laughing? This is so bad. We should not be laughing, guys. <laughs> yes, she did. <laughs> she did? Yes. No, 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 get this off camera. Did she really? I didn't. <laughs> I'm, I'm not laughing, I'm not laughing. Um, <laughs> I hope she's okay, but like, she's dead. How is she okay? <laughs> She'll be okay. How do you guys feel about Elon Musk releasing a flying car last week? A flying car. Um, I mean, sleigh, I guess. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I heard of that. Did he take it to Mars? Wait, no, 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 no. And I know for a fact that didn't happen <laughs> because I would know and I would want one. So that did not happen. You would want one? I'd want a flying car. Who wouldn't? You wouldn't want a flying car? I mean, technically, isn't it just a plane? <laughs> How do you feel about Kim Kardashian finally suing Kanye West for defamation? She's suing him! Oh! Absolutely! Absolutely! Well, listen, she really shouldn't be putting her down like that. So I understand. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. How do you guys feel knowing that all this news that I told you was fake? I've been bamboozled. Damn, dog. That's cool. It's all right. It sounds very real, and I might just be really gullible. She got us for a second. <laughs> Cause she I, did have COVID. Listen, I almost and I, it and I almost lied. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's horrible that she died. That would have been a horrible thing. <laughs> Looks like you guys are more gullible than I thought. I'm Morgan Haggett, CB TV. Well, that wraps it up here from Cypress Bay. I'm Alex Lance. And I'm Nicole Borman. If you want to check out more stories like this, be sure to check out our Broward T News Facebook page. See you next time. Broward Teen News was brought to you by ProSound and Video.